You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So Ray Epps says now he's about to be charged for January 6th, and he blames the relentless attacks by Fox News. <laughs> this guy, listen, if there were ever a just wildly bizarre coincidence, an impossible coincidence, it would be Ray Epps and this entire theory. This entire situation. I don't know. Yeah, is it a is it a conspiracy theory? I, I, I don't know. It's definitely a theory. How this guy has not been charged or locked up for what he was doing at January 6th is just mind blowing to me. It's it's impossible that this guy is not working for the government. He's working for somebody. There's no doubt about it. He has to be. But this is what's interesting. So I got an article here by BizPoc Review is saying Ray Epps is going to be charged and he's blaming Fox News. So more than two and a half years after the infamous January 6 events in Washington, D.C., Ray Epps, who was caught on video urging protesters to go into the Capitol, revealed in a defamation lawsuit against Fox News that he is about to be charged for his actions. A move the Department of Justice would not have made were it not for that pesky Tucker Carlson, according to the complaint. <laughs> Tucker Carlson is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's official. This guy is shaking. He is moving. He's stirring the pot. This guy is, he's amazing. He is probably one of the best. He's one of the best warriors we got in the conservative movement. One of the best. You've seen him. He all but destroyed Mike Pence's entire career in two minutes. I don't know if you guys heard of it. Well, you know what? I'll just go ahead and play it right now. Here's Tucker Carlson ending Mike Pence's presidential race. Here, check this out. Uh, let me say one last but thing. We've on run out of ammunition, so we're sending him cluster bombs. So because we've sent our ammunition to Ukraine, mm -hmm. which has not yet won the war, whatever that means, no one has defined it. But... Isn't that prima facie evidence that we have become weaker militarily by our support from Ukraine? Or how am I missing something? Well, we're out of ammunition, so we're sending cluster bombs. Well, first off, since Joe Biden took office, he's been working to cut military spending. And frankly, the recent debt ceiling deal that was done, if they don't pass all their 13 appropriations bills, will result in a 1% cut in our military spending after inflation in 2025. Half ago, Russia had the second most powerful military in the world. Today, they have the second most powerful military in Ukraine. All right, that's progress. Make no mistake about this. We promised them 33 Abrams tanks in January. I heard again two weeks ago in Ukraine, they still don't have them. We've been telling them we'll train their F-16 pilots, but now they're saying maybe January, we'll let somebody transfer some jets. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, have you, I know you're running for president, you are Thank distra you. you are distressed notice. that the Ukrainians don't have enough American tanks. Every city in the United States has become much worse over the past three years. Yeah. Drive around. There's not one city that's gotten better in the United States. Okay. And it's visible. Our economy has degraded. The suicide rate has jumped. Public filth and disorder and crime have exponentially increased. And yet... Your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. Right. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. <laughs> Tucker, I've heard that routine from you before, but that's not my concern. That's not my concern? Is that not, I mean, how did the crowd not, like, boo? Like, that was so shocking to me. When I first heard it, I said, no way, no way did this guy just say, that's not my concern. So America's not your concern, America first. So there you go, folks. 
you know, you could say it was out of context. You can say whatever you want. But the thing is, when Mike Pence was put on the spot, he said, America is not my concern. That's essentially what he said. You know, when he was asked, what about America? You're sending all this money to Ukraine. What about America? He said, that's not my concern. So you put it in whatever context you want. I personally believe Mike Pence, obviously he's nervous. The guy, you know, he obviously he looks nervous on the stage and he obviously was caught off guard with that question and he didn't have a good response. I mean, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't I would not having a good response is an understatement. He said the exact opposite of what somebody should say. He said the most the worst possible thing you could say after being asked that question. So, look, there's no doubt Tucker Carlson is is back. One of the reasons why. Among a couple, I think Tucker Carlson was fired because he started bringing up January 6th. He started playing the footage. He started playing the audio and they didn't like it. He was a rebel rouser for this conservative movement. There's no doubt about it. They see Tucker Carlson as a threat. The system, the Murdochs over there at Fox. I don't know him personally, but they're not on our side. Regardless, whether you watch Fox or not, obviously I do because... You know, I, I don't watch it religiously, but obviously I watch multiple different news outlets. I watch MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. I watch all of them because I like getting both sides of the story. I like to see what my enemies are up to. But Fox News is, you know, the reason why they got rid of Tucker was because the kids are taking over Fox. Because the old man wants to either sell Fox and he's not going to be able to he's not going to have any buyers if people like Bongino and Tucker Carlson are on it so he got rid of them and not only that but lawsuits you had the lawsuit with Dominion voting which those people listen we're not going to get in that that's for another show but voting machines I'm sorry folks no go no go with the voting machines the electronic voting machines anybody can read the tea leaves with that Electronic voting machines in elections right now, elect especially in this type of environment, are a no-go. No way. I don't care if they're connected to the internet. They're not connected to the internet. I don't care. There is no way our election should be ran by technology that a few companies own the proprietary rights to. No way. And we can't, we can't audit the machines. We can't know how they work. We're not allowed to see inside of them. That no, no, that is the dumbest thing I can I think I can ever think of. So Dominion, that's another thing. But when Tucker Carlson started showing the tapes of January sixth, and then right after that, the uh, January sixth, the shaman, the guy with the bullhorns, he was released from prison after those tapes were released. I think we all know what's going on here. One of the biggest, the shocking, the most shocking thing to me is, is Ray Epps. It's Ray Epps. How this guy's not charged, I have no idea. And we're going to go through why I think that. So Epps has been suspected by many, including Carlson, to be a federal agent. Quote, in the aftermath of the events of January 6th, Fox News searched for a scapegoat to blame other than Donald Trump or the Republican Party. Does that sound like, does that sound like something a conservative would say? I don't think so. The lawsuit contends, eventually they turned on one of their own, telling a fantastical story in which Ray Epps, who was a Trump supporter that participated in the protests on January 6th, was an undercover FBI agent and was responsible for the mob that violently broke into the Capitol and interfered with a peaceful transition of power for the first time in this country's history. I don't, definitely not for the first time in this country's history, because I'm pretty sure people stormed the White House. Do you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. We all remember. We all remember. Remember they were calling uh, calling Donald Trump Bunker Bunker Don because people stormed the White House? How many officers got injured when they were storming the gates at the White House? How many people were charged in that incident? None. Anybody that was charged was released. All the charges got dropped. How is this possible? And they want to sit there and say that there's not a dual system of justice here. It's obvious, folks. They, they attacked the White House. The, this mob. 
You guys remember they were they were burning buildings right down the street. They were they were starting things on fire. They broke down the fence. Secret Service members got injured. Capitol Police officers got injured. We all remember that. And then they it forced the White House staff to go into the bunker at the White House. And then instead of the media coming on the next day and condemning that behavior, they came on the next day and was making fun of Donald Trump for having to go down into the bunker. So listen, it's definitely not the first time that there was a interference in a peaceful transition of power. We all remember 2016. So as BizPoc Review previously reported in March, Epps demanded that Carlson issue a formal on-air apology and retract false and def defamatory statements. The now fired Fox News host repeatedly made about his possible work as a government provocateur on that fateful day. And this is why I, I don't know if you're in, if you're not up to date, I'm going to explain to you why people think this guy is some kind of federal agent. I pulled some audio from a 60 Minutes episode where they were interviewing Ray Epps. Here, check this out. Epps, once a loyal Fox News watcher, told us he doesn't understand how he got cast as the villain. The Epps version is more mundane. They believed the 2020 election had been stolen from Donald Trump and considered January 6th a legitimate protest. It was a sloppy election. And then to top that off, you have talking heads reporting that there's problems with the voting machines and different things like that. The election stolen. So, yeah, we had concerns. I, I wanted to be there. I wanted to witness this with my own eyes. Epps went to Washington with his 36-year-old son and almost immediately stepped into trouble. The conspiracy theory starts here, the night of January 5th. Give me one minute. Give me one minute. Okay? On the streets of D.C., tensions were running high at a pro-Trump rally being live-streamed on the Internet. The Marine veteran tried to take charge. So I'm going to put it out there. I'm probably going to go to jail for it. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? No! No! Peacefully. Fed, 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 fed. To summon. Okay. So this guy, I'm telling you, folks, the, the whole thing just looks sketchy, man. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that this is an audio only podcast. But when you watch this interview, when you watch these videos, this guy is acting like a fed. Why do you think these Trump supporters were yelling fed, 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 fed? Because they know that there's provocateurs in the crowd. They know that there's there's undercover informants in the crowd. They know. And so this guy sits there and tells them. Oh, I'm probably going to be arrested tomorrow, but I don't care. We got to go into the Capitol building, into the Capitol building. Folks, they arrested people. There's people sitting in January 6th prison in the in the gulag right now for just showing up. And this guy sitting there telling people to go into the Capitol. And so when people go into the Capitol, he doesn't get charged with anything. <laughs> This is why people think that this is a big damn conspiracy theory, man. This is why they think this guy's a fed. Because of stuff like this. And oh, trust me, it gets worse. Epps seems so over the top, he must have been a government agent. A fed sent to entrap them. When you said, we have to go into the Capitol. We have to go into the Capitol. What, what were you thinking? I said some stupid things. My thought process, we surround the Capitol, we get all the people there. I mean, I had, I had problems with the election. It was my duty as an American to peacefully protest along with anybody else that wanted to. And yet, everybody that showed up is being arrested and charged. What, we got a thousand people and now the DOJ says they're looking for another thousand? <laughs> and this guy said, I mean, he is blatantly telling people he wanted to go into the Capitol building and, and enticing other people to do the same thing. And somehow he's not charged. Oh, and it gets better. It gets better here. Check it out. The next morning, January 6th, Epps was out by the Washington Monument, still focused on a single goal. We are going to the Capitol where our problems are. It's that direction. Here, we're going to walk down 
to the Capitol. While President Trump was still speaking at the ellipse, Ray Epps walked. This was bizarre to me when I was recording this audio. Do you guys notice how 60 Minutes cut out that statement of Donald Trump when he said, we're going to go march on the Capitol peacefully and patriotically? They edited the speech. They took that out of the speech. Why? Because that's what they're trying to indict him on. So they want people, this is how corrupt and crooked and disgusting our media is. They edited out Donald Trump saying peacefully and patriotically. <laughs> it's, listen, folks, we are in, we are in like stage five information warfare right now. We are like DEFCON 5. When they're selectively editing out parts of a speech that Donald Trump made so that it makes him look bad. <sighs> Man. All right, here we go. Toward the Capitol, he told us he wanted to be up front to help keep the peace. What happened next at Peace Circle, where protesters first overran police, is seen as a smoking gun. Here it is. Epps pulled this agitated rioter aside and said something. Conspiracists say he was giving marching orders, because seconds later, this happened. The first Capitol Police officer goes down. As closely as you can remember, what exactly did you say to him? Dude, we're not here for that. The police aren't the enemy. Something like that. All right, folks. Does that sound like something you would whisper in a rioter's ear? Think about it. If you're there, if you're truly there to trying to keep the peace and try and convince the crowd to be peaceful, then why would you whisper in somebody's ear and not yell to the crowd like you were yelling all the other times? So you're yelling to the crowd, we're going to go into the Capitol, but yet you whisper in a rioter's ear, dude, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to go after the police. That's what you whisper in his ear. And then literally one second later, this kid bust down the barriers while Ray Epps is standing right there watching it all happen. And then because that kid burst down those barriers, busted those barriers down, which folks, it was a bike rack. How this place wasn't more secure is another theory, but we're not going to get into that just yet. But it knocks a police officer down and then you can hear a, a protester saying, whoa, 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 wait, wait, and helps this woman up. And Ray Epps is just standing there the whole time. What did he whisper in his ear? Sitting there saying that you whispered, dude, we're not here to go after the police. We're here to be peaceful. That's what you, that's what you claimed you whispered. Why would you whisper that? Why would you not yell to the entire crowd? Yo, we need to be peaceful. We're not here to harm the police or whatever it is that he said. It doesn't make sense, folks. This is why people don't trust this entire damn thing. This is why. This guy is a liar. I'm telling you, this guy knows more than what he's saying. Because we already know that there was, I don't know, I think we know now that there was 49 undercover informants. We don't know because we can't get any answers from the FBI. We can't get any answers from the Department of Justice. Nobody can tell us how many undercover agents were at January 6th that day. It should be none. It seems like a pretty damn easy answer to give, right? Why were there undercover informants on January 6th? Why were there undercover informants there? And I'm telling you, years down the road, we're going to find out that there were hundreds. You guys remember the Gretchen Whitmer the Gretchen Whitmer debacle. They had five suspects and 13 FBI agents. <sighs> so if we know that's how the FBI operated in Michigan, how do you think they operated here? How many undercover informants were at January 6th that day? That's what I want to know. 
And that's exactly what whoever wins, that's exactly what the next Republican president should be releasing on day one. That's all that's all Republicans, that's all conservatives are trying to do. That's all Tucker Carlson is trying to do. We just want the truth. Because personally, if you ask me, I think the riot on January 6th that day was a false flag operation orchestrated by the United States government against its own people. That's what I think it is. That's what I think it is. And then because you have to ask yourself, well, why would they do something like that? To do exactly what they're doing now so that they can indict Donald Trump and keep him off the ballot for the election before we can even vote for him. All this is a damn plan. We're talking about the FBI. I'm not saying that these people are are evil geniuses, but they kind of are. You read into some of the stuff and some of the false flags that these that the FBI has orchestrated in the past with Martin Luther King and the Black Panthers. They it's not like this is the first time this has ever happened. And Gretchen Whitmer now with that entrapment case. So they act like, you know, they clutch their pearls and lower their brows at anybody that's that thinks that the FBI orchestrated or the federal government orchestrated the January 6th riot. Sure, do I think, yeah, there was there was bad, bad people there that hurt police. And if they did, those people need to be punished. But for the thousands of other people that just showed up that are sitting in a freaking gulag right now, political prisoners, that's what we're going to do. And if, and, and I'm telling you, when the day comes and we find out that there was hundreds of undercover informants there that were enticing, telling people to break down barriers or telling people to bust out windows, they're going to have a shit storm on their hands. Because I'm telling you, that's exactly what January 6th was. And Ray Epps got caught up in all this stuff. He is the key to all this. And so if he is indeed actually being charged by the Department of Justice, that makes me wonder. It really does. It makes me wonder if they're probably, I, I don't know, maybe they're going to they're gonna charge him just so the you know conservatives get off his back and they just put an anklet bracelet on him. He probably won't spend one day in jail or maybe he'll spend like a few days. Maybe this is the Department of Justice trying to bring down the heat on the FBI by just doing like a fake show trial. For Ray Epps. I mean, he says he's being charged, but I haven't seen there's no charging documents or nothing. I, I haven't seen anything about it. So he has he's not charged yet. But he said that, that that's why he's filing a defamation. That's why he's suing Fox is because he's going to be charged. So I don't know. But look, Tucker Carlson surely knows he's seen he had all the video footage. There's like 40,000 hours of video footage. And he said he's seen it. We all know that he's had it. He's got the footage. Him and his producers were going through it. This was an interview that Tucker did on the um, Russell Brand show the other day. Check this out. And that was a tip off to me. I mean, I had no thought in my head as I watched this happen on television and in the subsequent weeks that U.S. Law enforcement or military agencies had anything to do with it. That never crossed my mind. I never thought there was it was a false flag or anything like that. I'm not a conspiracist by temperament. I never thought that. Uh, and then I interviewed the chief of the Capitol Police, Stephen Sund, in an interview that was never aired on Fox. By the way, I was fired before it could air. Um, I, I'm going to interview him again. But Stephen Sund was the totally non-political worked for Nancy Pelosi. I mean, this was not some right-wing activist. He was the chief of the Capitol Police on January 6th. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That crowd was filled with federal agents. What? Yes. Well, he would know, of course, because he was in charge of security at the site. So the more time has passed, now it's been... The Capitol Police chief says that event was filled with federal agents. What the hell is going on here? I think the American people need to know. We deserve to know. And this is, I mean, it's just sad that we got to go through all these battles and FOIA requests and interrogations and, and, uh, and House oversight committees and contempt of courts. Just give us the damn answer. Was the federal government involved in orchestrating a false flag operation against the American people on January 6th? 
Just tell us the damn truth, man. And this is why you have people that don't trust the FBI anymore. This is why you have people that don't trust the CIA or any government institution. The CDC. NIAD. The IRS. This is why you're completely destroying all credibility and integrity in these government institutions. Because you want to cover shit up. The American people have a right to know what happened on January 6th. And certainly the political prisoners that are rotting away in a gulag right now, they certainly have a right to know. And Ray Epps is the key to this. This is why people think Ray Epps is a federal agent. It's because this guy is on video telling people to go into the Capitol. On video whispering something in a rioter's ear. And then a second later, that kid rips down one of the barriers and knocks over a police officer while Ray Epps is standing there. And then this guy has the balls to get on 60 Minutes and say, I whispered in his ear, hey, we're not here for the cops. We're not here to be violent or anything like that. Why the hell would you whisper that in somebody's ear after you just got done yelling to everybody to go into the Capitol? Why wouldn't you yell to everybody, we're not here for this, we're not here to hurt the cops or whatever he said? None of this makes sense. This is why people don't trust this entire scenario. People don't trust this entire damn situation. They just don't trust it. Finally, in May 23rd, the Department of Justice notified Epps that it would seek to charge him criminally for events on January 6, 2021. Two and a half years later, Epps attorney Michael Teeter writes in the complaint, the relentless attacks by Fox and Mr. Carlson and the resulting political pressure likely resulted in the criminal charges. So it took this footage, millions of Americans, Tucker Carlson, an entire news outlet for the Department of Justice to finally come and charge this guy. After you know they seen the footage, they seen the same footage we did well before we did. This guy was on the FBI's list. He was picked up, arrested, and then released and removed from the list the next day. While thousands of other Americans are, are, are getting arrested and charged. And I'm trying to get an interview by one. I'm trying to get an interview by um, John Strand, who's getting ready to go away for three years in a federal prison for obstructing government something. I don't know what it is. Some bullshit charge. This is what they're doing to everybody. They're coming up with these, you know, trespassing, trespassing on government property, stupid shit like that. And that's what they're, they're nailing these people to the wall because of this. And if it turns out that all this was orchestrated by the government and these people spent years of their lives in prison, hoo, 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 buddy, you're going to have a big problem. This is a huge, huge issue. And all the American people want and all this country needs is the truth. They could stop all this if they wanted to. Just be honest with people, man. Stop making people, you know, dig and dig and dig FOIA requests and oversight committees and subpoenas and contempt of courts. Just tell us the damn truth. How many people were there that day and where is the after action report? If you had informants there, it's obvious that you do because you're not denying it. Where's the after action report? What did they have to say? What were their roles? What did they see? What did they do? Because we already know we got footage of a couple uninformed, uh, uninformed officers inciting the riot, telling people to go, 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 helping people up scaffolding. I mean, so this is no wonder why people think the way that they think about this. Online news of Epps's alleged impending indictment is raising more questions than answers. Given how other January 6 prisoners have been treated, many wonder if Epps's claim is true. Why is he still not arrested? Others have noted how the mainstream media has, with news of alleged charges against Epps, suddenly softened its descriptions of what we were assured by the Democrat-led January 6th committee was the worst thing to happen in America since the Civil War. The Washington Post now refers to the events of January 6th as pro-Trump rallies, while the New York Times now calls what it previously said was a violent insurrection mere demonstrations. And Rolling Stone has now downgraded its characterization of January 6th to protests. And here it is right here. I'm looking at it. 
The New York Times, Washington Post, and Rolling Stones have downgraded January 6th from insurrection to demonstrations, rallies, and protests in their coverage of Ray Epps. And you wonder why people are skeptical of the story. The only January 6th prisoner that the media is defending. Why? It doesn't make sense. Why is Ray Epps the only person they are defending that was at the Capitol that day? Why? It doesn't make sense. They're defending him so much. They're so dedicated to defending him that they're willing to downgrade what they've been calling the worst thing since Pearl Harbor to demonstrations, rallies, and protests. I mean, we all knew this wasn't an insurrection, a deadly insurrection, but the, the, which goes to my point also is how they just throw shit at the wall and then they see which narrative sticks. So in the beginning, it was deadly insurrection even though it was Ashley Babbitt, a Trump-supporting protester that was shot in the neck by a Capitol Police, was the only person to die that day. And then everyone else died of like a heart attack a couple days later, then a few weeks later, some, another Capitol Police officer died. And then the media turned this into a deadly insurrection. The worst thing since Pearl Harbor. Worse than 9-11. And then now all of a sudden they're downgrading it to demonstrations, rallies, and protests. I mean, it's just, it's just more proof that the media sucks. They are nothing but just Pravda outlets for the Democrat Party. They are the Democrat Party's media apparatus. They are the state media. That is what they are. They are state media. They are Pravda. Whatever helps the Democrat Party. Whatever helps the government, whatever helps the Biden administration, whatever they got to do, whether they got to gaslight Americans, lie to Americans, manipulate the Americans, whatever it is they got to do. This is why our media, the, the left wing Pravda media is disgusting. Disgusting. The things that they've been wrong on. They've been wrong on every major issue the last 10 years. Because they're not honest. They're not, we don't have honest media anymore. So on Twitter, many believe the Fed's charges against Epps is all for show. That's what I said. The FBI is looking to cover its ass and act like he's not a Fed and act like they're doing something, stated one user. This user said, I'd be surprised if Ray Epps actually sees the inside of a cell. It seems like this is all for show. Why didn't they charge him immediately with the evidence they had? That's true. They had this footage. They had this footage all along. And then two and a half years later, now you, now you want to charge him? It doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. So now they're going to charge Epps, or is this just a cover for Biden and the DOJ until 2024 is over? I can hear Ray now. I can't comment on an ongoing investigation. Let's see if Epps is put in solitary and how long it takes him to be released. That's true. I mean, we can't put anything past this disgusting administration and the disgusting behavior from this Department of Justice, from this administration, from the FBI, all our intelligence agencies. I mean, we are witnessing the rise of totalitarianism, all being pushed and propagated by our own taxpayer-funded agencies. The FBI needs to be dismantled. I'm sorry. I don't think there's any saving it. It needs to be dismantled, dissolved, and all the ongoing cases need to be dispersed throughout other agencies. I'm sorry. It, it can't be saved because no matter what you do, whether it's Republicans fix it or Democrats fix it, Neither side is going to trust one another. So it's, it's over. The FBI's done. It's done. I say Chris Ray just impeach his ass and just shut down the FBI. I'm sorry. I, I know there's a probably, I, I guarantee 90%, 99% of the people that working at the FBI are great patriots. But if that were the case, why not blow the whistle with your, with your fellow coworkers? I get it. I get it. Trust me, I get it. I work for the government too. I get it. You want to keep your pension. You want to, you know, all this work you put in. You just got to make it five more years. You're good. I get it. I totally do. You're in your comfort zone. But if we really had 95% of the agents there were great people, patriotic, God, God fearing people, then why do we only, why are we, not, why don't we have more whistleblowers? So again, I say dissolve the whole damn thing and shut it down. Dismantle it. No new building. They want a building the size of the Pentagon. They want like a $40 billion budget increase. No, no, no. Absolutely not. 
All right, so moving on. So this is some news. Olympics bans transgender athletes. Big news. This is, I think this is the start of the trans, this whole transgender men competing in women's sports. This is when it's all getting ready to come, come to a close here, which is good because it's absolutely disgraceful. So Paralympics chief calls out on individual sports to decide transgender policies. Some para, some Paralympic sports do have independent governing bodies, but others are run by the same governing body as their Olympic counterparts. The Paralympics remains open to transgender athletes competing in certain women's events at next year's Paris Games after joining the International Olympic Committee in a ruling that individual sports should decide their eligibility criteria. Look, majority of Americans, majority of people do not support men competing in women's sports. So this whole thing about, you know, Democrats supporting democracy and the majority rules and all this other bullshit that they talk about. No, they don't. Not when it comes to their agenda. Like I said, these people have no principles. When it comes to pushing their agenda, anything goes. And the ends justify the means. Their principles are malleable. They will change them to whatever they have to. So in order for them to keep men competing with women, absolutely destroying women's records, women's sports, and women in general, they will say and do whatever they have to. But I think you're going to start seeing some sanity creep out in the Olympics. Courage is contagious, folks. Courage is contagious. One sport league or one, um, one Paralympic, all they have to do is just say, look, we're not allowing transgender men to compete with women. We're just not going to do it in this sport. And then other sports are going to see them doing that, and they're going to follow suit. Because nobody supports this. You have men absolutely crushing women's records. And so what's going to happen 10, 15 years from now down the road when these women lost their records for some damn social contagion that ran through and infected this country like a cancer for a few years? And now these women's records, what, are they going to get them back? Are they going to get their records reinstated? They're going to get their trophies back? This is wrong. On so many levels, this is wrong. But I thought it was important for you guys to hear. I think this is, me personally, I think this is a change to come. I think this is the beginning of the end of this whole men competing in women's sports. But that doesn't mean people need to give up. We need to keep talking about this. We need to keep pushing this. Like, I think Americans are genuinely, like, kind people. But kindness can lead to bad things. You know, just because you're kind doesn't mean you're right. And so I think majority of Americans just wanted to be kind and respectful. And they're like, yeah, you know, yeah, it doesn't really, it's not impacting me. It's not impacting anything. So who cares, right? That's always their attitude. Who cares? It's not impacting your life. It's not impacting anything until it does. And so I think majority of Americans just started out because, you know, they wanted to be respectful. And then when you ask them, well, so how do you feel about men, you know, competing in women's sports and taking away their records? How do you feel about men in the octagon beating the shit out of women? Like this is, and obviously rational people are going to say like, no, that's, you know, it's no go. And they, then they are. Majority of people do not accept that. They don't. They do not want that. And so I think Olympics, by allowing this to happen, by at least they're showing a little speckle of rationale when it comes to men competing with women. And, and look, even that took courage. So you, you got to give them a hand. So we'll see what happens. I think, like I said, it's going to take one sport to ban it, and then other sports are going to do it. And then eventually we can rid this insanity from our society, from our culture. This is not right. This transgender ideology, this, this transgenderism is absolutely wrecking our country, our society, and our culture. And, and so, look, and I've been saying this from the beginning, the LGB community needs to drop the T. They need to drop the transgenders because they, they, have, they have attached themselves to the LGB community and now have hijacked it and are wrapping themselves up in the LGB community. And, and now the LGB community has to take all the bullets. The LGB community has to take all the lashes. Then they'll unravel the LGB shield, and then they'll move on to sending drag queens to elementary schools. And so, like, they'll do these crazy-ass things, these things that are way, way just 
out of the norm, like drag queens in elementary schools. And then when people are critical about it, they'll say, how dare you come after the LGB community? Because what they did was they took the LGB community, then they added the queer, then they added the T, then they added the uh, the whatever else it is now. I think there's a plus sign now because they ran out of letters. And so the LGB community has got to be standing back and saying like, whoa, whoa, like when did all this happen? When did the rainbow flag become a transgender flag? Like when did that happen? And like, so why... So I just feel like everything happened so fast. So the transgender community hijacked the LGB community and using it as a human shield to get through all their wacky ideas, to force all their their wackiness onto the American people. And then they're just going to throw the LGB community to the side when they're done. No, the LGB, the, the transgender community needs to start their own movement. Go out, start your own thing, get your own sports, do your own thing, fight your own battles, all that stuff. You know, but instead they just hijack everything. They hijack the the LGB community. They hijack the pride flag. All they hijack everything. They hijack women's sports. Now they're trying to hijack the schools, hijacking our government, hijacking our military. They're getting all this crap. It's like a cancer, just infecting everything. And so you guys remember in the beginning when they're like, oh. When people were like, yeah, well, they're they're coming after your children. And they're like, they're not coming after your kids. Okay, you, you MAGA extremist. They're not coming after your kids. Well, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Obviously, this is something that, you know, again, I think it's going to work itself out, but it's just damage control at this point. It's containing the damage. Where are the feminists at? Like, you got Riley Gaines. That's great. You got a few of them. That, that's great. But seriously, like, where are all the other women at? I mean, these men are destroying your sports. I mean, they're completely wreaking havoc on women's sports. And here it is. It's the men that are standing up and saying, whoa, 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 you need to back off. So I like being in the protector role. I I do. I I don't mind being a a protector for women's sports. I would do it any day, any time. Just show me where and when I'll be there. Because I think that is a man's, a man's duty is protect women. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what men do. And so, but what's bothering me, what what I find weird is where are the feminists at? The feminists that fought for all this stuff. They fought during the women's suffrage movement. They fought for women's sports, the WNBA, women's tennis, women's golf, women's, women's, all women's sports, women's, like, so where are they at? I mean, you got a few, I, like I said, you got a few, but where are the rest? I mean, I don't mind fighting this battle for them, but I, I kind of feel like they should be stepping up too. I mean, th- that's that's what you have right now. You have men taking over women's sports. And look, uh, this Olympic story, I think, is is the beginning to actually some sanity in our country. So that's always good. And that's why I wanted to share it with you. Um, So one last thing. This just came out. So Rand Paul says he's confirmed that Fauci has government-funded security detail amid alleged retirement. (sighs) So, Senator, this guy Fauci, man, he is like, we just can't get rid of this guy. Senator Rand Paul confirmed former director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, NIAD, Anthony Fauci is receiving government-funded security detail despite his alleged retirement. While appearing on Jesse Waters' primetime on Monday, Paul said Health and Human Services admitted that the United States Marshal Service is paying for Fauci's security detail, but that HHS is reimbursing it. Well, why? Why are we paying for this guy's security detail? Do you guys know how much Dr. Dr. Fauci is worth? This guy's worth millions and millions of dollars. From God knows what. Who knows? That's just the money we know about. You know, that's another thing people need to realize. We only know these people's net worth because they allow us to know it. Like, it's not like these people can't hide money. 
So when they say Dr. Fauci's worth, you know, a hundred million dollars or forty million dollars, that's just what we know about. Same thing with the Bidens. You know, Biden's worth like eighteen or twenty million dollars. But come on, folks. So far, just in the scandals with all the the foreign adversaries and the influence peddling and all the corrupt business deals his son was doing, and as he was the big guy for the for the business, they're saying they're talking like thirty fifty million dollars, thirty to fifty million dollars so far, and they still have so many bank records to go through. So Joe Biden's worth way more than eighteen million dollars, and besides eighteen million dollars. As a senator since he was 29, mm, I don't know. What's he got, like three mansions now? It's, it's all the whole damn thing. That whole family's just corrupt as hell. So this is what bothers me, though. Think of how much money we're paying for government employees, pensions, retirement, security detail, limos. Chris Ray has his own private jet that he flies around the country, takes it on vacation. Those 51 former intel agents that lied to the American people, that those, those 51 intel agents that signed that letter to allow Joe Biden to lie to the American people, yeah, all 51 of those people are retired, getting their pensions, and like 30 or 40 of them are working for the media now, whether it's MSNBC, NBC, or CNN. Yeah. We're paying their health care. We're paying their pensions, their 401ks. We're paying their security, most likely. Like, this stuff is unacceptable. And these are the kinds of things I think we need to rein in. Like, the Republican Party needs to rein all this shit in, bring all this money in, start doing some audits, because there is no doubt that the American people's biggest threat is the debt in this country. Because we are way off the grid. And you ask any economist out there, whether it's a, a, climate, a climate economist, whoever, they will sit and tell you we are on the event horizon when it comes to our debt. The United States government is spending entirely way too much money. Like I said, the Biden administration has spent $6 trillion in just two and a half years. Where is it? What is, I mean, what is it? Where did it go? Like, this is why people do not trust anything the government does. Because they see... They're, they see their money being devalued. They see their lives getting harder and all this money's being spent and being dispersed all throughout the land, all throughout the world. And we don't even know where it's at. You call your congressman right now and say, hey, where's that $40 billion we sent to Ukraine? Where did it buy? Where did it go? They can't tell you. In fact, they can't tell you a lot of where we send our money. They can tell you grants and stuff like that, but for the most part, they don't know where anything's at. This is why I say 90% of the money that we spend goes towards corruption. Whether it's, you know, corrupt politicians skimming off the top, stuff in their pockets, like the Biden family. You know, how much of that, that billion dollars that Joe Biden leveraged against the Ukraine, how much of that billion dollars he leveraged over Ukraine did Hunter Biden get? Hmm? This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like, and so when I see articles where Dr. Fauci, who's retired, still getting limousines and security detail paid by the taxpayers after the amount of damage this guy did to this country, I'm not saying Fauci alone did this, but ladies and gentlemen, we all know this crooked little weasel had a lot to do with COVID-19 and his stupid gain of function research. And this guy still believes in gain of function. He still wants it done. He still wants to fund gain of function research in the Wuhan lab. Is that not like insane that this guy learned nothing? Nothing. And I guarantee you, we all know and we knew from the very beginning that this virus was created in a lab and it leaked. We all know this. It is, it is almost a proven fact now. Almost every single institution has confirmed that. My question is, was it on purpose? And what were they doing the research on? A bioweapon or vaccines? This is why nobody trusts the government. This is, it's stuff like this. And they're still doing it. So imagine this. I want you to picture what COVID-19 was like. That three years of hell. That, that 
that China brought this country. And that virus had less than 1% fatality rate. Now imagine a virus that they're most likely working on for a weapon that has an 80 or 85% lethality rate or fatality rate. Imagine that. We're talking global extinction viruses that we, the taxpayers, are funding. This is the kind of stuff they make movies about. This is the stuff nightmares are made of. You're talking about these people poking and prodding and playing God with viruses. I say gain of function can be good if used in the right manner. But we all know that the government and everything it touches is not in the right manner. It's not for good intentions. Look, we took nuclear energy, something, one of the greatest discoveries in mankind, and we turned it into a bomb that killed hundreds of thousands of people. The governments should not be poking and prodding and playing God with viruses. I'm sorry. The problem we face now is, is if we're not creating bioweapons, that means the enemy's creating bioweapons. And I'm telling you right now, the end of the world is not going to be from nuclear. It's not going to be from climate change. It's going to be from man doing something stupid, like messing around with viruses. That's what the end of the world's going to look like. And it's probably going to happen just like COVID-19. Except it's not going to be a 1% fatality rate virus. It's going to be a 90% fatality rate virus. And nobody's escaping it. Because you can't see it. You can't taste it. You can't smell it. And we have corrupt governments that don't tell us the truth anyways. Oh, but rest assured, their asses will be down in a bunker buried in some mountain somewhere for the rest of their life. So they'll be safe. But it's always us, the American people, that have to suffer for all the government's stupidity. I say you need to cut the government in half. And then that other half of the government needs to be way more efficient. Way more efficient. I don't mind spending billions of dollars. I really don't. I think the government's a bad thing to give it to if you actually want to get something for your money. But I think the American people need to know where their money is going. The American people have almost no say anymore in how our money's spent. It didn't used to be like that. But it's, you know, the American people just sat back and, and thought the government had their best interest, and they didn't. They let these people, they let the dog off the leash for too long. And now things are out of control, way out of control. We're talking like ending our currency out of control. You got, you got BRICS talking about dropping the U.S. currency? <sighs> that would be a catastrophe for our, for our economy. You want to talk about, I mean, we're talking like depression level stuff here. And we have Dr. Fauci getting limousines and security detail while he's a multimillionaire and Chris Ray, the FBI director, taking private jets that we pay for on vacations. So, like I said, I don't mind giving the government money just so long as we can see where it's going. And I think the American people need to be way more pushy on this. And I think the government needs to invest their money better. You know, they sit there and they say, oh, we're trying to change the climate on a planet, so we're going to need $75 billion to do it. Do you know what you can get with $75 billion? You could probably cure hunger in, in Africa. You can certainly clean up the homeless problem in our country. We already talked about that on a episode in the, on a past episode. It would take $20 billion to clean up 50 to 75% of the homelessness in this country. How many billions of dollars have we spent on other stupid stuff that we can't, we have no, nothing to show for it? And so I'm not against giving the money, uh, giving the government money to spend. I have a problem with what they spend their money on. That's where we need to focus on what we spend our money on. I think we can be getting way more for the money we spend. Six trillion dollars in two and a half years, and nobody can point to anything that's bettered their life. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. No go, man. No go. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today. Um, as always, thank you for tuning in. And if you like the show, 
send me an email. If you didn't like the show, send me an email. If you got any comments or you want to leave me a message or ask me a question, you get a hold of me, Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. So get ready for the whistleblower testimony that's going to be coming out this week. It's going to be wild. This guy, Shapely, he's going to be giving some wild ass testimony about what he experienced in the IRS as an investigator investigating the Biden's IRS scandals, their tax tax evasions. Supposedly, there's millions, eight point three million dollars that's unaccounted for that Hunter Biden never paid taxes on. And not only that, but they, they were tipped off and and other things like crazy scandal. This Biden family scandals, the Biden family scandals are going to be the biggest scandals in our country's history. And here it is. The media doesn't even want to talk about it. The Biden documents case, the Biden classified documents case. Joe Biden's under special in special investigation right now, but you wouldn't know it because all they talk about is the Trump document case. Joe Biden had classified documents in his garage and all throughout Delaware. Why? Where's the special counsel at? What's going on with it? And that's what we're going to be talking about on the next episode. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you. God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.